Now, moving on to Frogan's address resolution. So we have content. We know that we can register addresses. Along with Alexi, we also saw that Frogan's plan is capable of searching for documents and FSDL documents on distant servers. Now, all we need to understand is when the FCR is going to be open to the public at large, how is it going to be possible for Frogan's player users and Frogan's users throughout the world, how is it going to be possible for them to resolve these addresses, to, to ask the operator to find the hosting site? where your Frogan site is hosted after you've communicated the Frogan's address. So, in other words, how is it going to be possible for billions of users sending Frogan's addresses to just one operator and this from throughout the world, how is it going to be possible for this operator to tell them, OK, this is where you can find the Frogan site? Well, to talk about it, one person working with the FCR operator, which is STG Interactive SA. Matthew, where are you? Bonsoir à tous. Mathieu, merci. Matthew, thank you. Thank you for joining us, representing STG Interactive. So. Let's talk about Frogan's addresses and how they can be resolved. Besoin d'un peu d'aide? Pas du tout. Je maîtrise la machine. Do you need my help? No, I'm fine with the the equipment. Thank you very much, Stephen. Matthew. Do you want to come here so that you can manage your presentation the way you want? Yeah, thank you. Alors, euh, Mathieu. So, Matthew, the problem we have today is to try and understand what happens when an end user owns, has Frogan's player on their smartphone, their watch, or whatever connected object they have, and they've keyed in the Frogan star parasol uh, uh, address, and they access the content, i.e. Thomas's content. What happened? What took place behind this apparently very simple action from the user? Well, Previously, we had different uh, steps that were presented. So we have an end user, it was Thomas, and Thomas wanted to publish content. So he had his Frogan's site hosted on a server and asked to any FCR to register his address. Then what happened? Well, when Jinkit made this request to register Thomas, he made a request that included the address from the registry, which belongs, which is managed by us, but which is, which belongs to OP3FT. Yes, we do have a contract. Absolutely. And this database is going to uh, send calls that will be sent to the Frogan's network system. So that Thomas can then verify that his site is actually online. Le FNS, qui va lui renvoyer. So the FCR is going to call the FNS, sending it the IP address and other metadata which are defined in the specification. 
Yes, and this specification is what you can see here. That's FNSL. That's a core component of the Frogan's technology. Frogan's network system language. And that's the technical specification that defines the content of those documents which are exchanged during the resolving of Frogan's addresses. These are small, short XML documents. And we'll have plenty of time and describe it during our next conference. But to, be, to keep it short, unlike the DNS system, because FNS has borrowed its uh, acronym from the DNS, the domain name system for websites. Well, FNS records and FNSL are small domain names that contain a large number of metadata that gives you lots of information about the content of the Frogan site itself. I'm not going to give you too many details, but as early as the resolving of the address, you have, well, you know if it's an adult content type of site, uh, you, you know if there is a ban for certain content in certain countries, you, 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 you have this warning and you have the version of the FSDR which has been used. And if there is a problem on that level, the Frogan's player is not going to open the uh, Frogan's site. Um. Donc nous, effectivement, ce qui va nous intéresser ce so what we are interested in is the blue part because I'm talking to you tonight and we're talking about the operator's part. Yes, so let's talk about that. What are the challenges you, you as SDG are faced with as operators of the central registry in order to make it possible for this resolution to be achieved? Can I have my slide back, please? On a plus de slide en régie. We have uh, no slide. On peut même pas compter sur ses collègues. Hello, up there. Technicians, do we have slides? Have you lost the slides? Très, très rapidement, en fait, si on se rappelle du schéma, on... Okay, uh, let's pretend that you all remember the graph. So, um, what can we do if, too many, if a large number of people want to register Frogan's addresses? And what should we do when many users want to access Frogan's addresses? So we have the Frogan's registry, which is going to be used for content publishers. And here we are going to talk about millions of users. On va avoir effectivement quelques millions de so we have a few million, we'll have a few hundreds of millions of publishers. The major issue will be on the FNS side. The FNS is for all end users. So of course we're talking about an order of magnitude of several billion users. You mean web surfers? Absolutely. And this will be one of our major challenges. Okay, so this is what we need to talk about. Absolutely. Now, with regards to the design of the FCR, maybe we'll have opportunities to talk about this in another conference. I certainly hope so. I think it's going to be very good for people to discover other facets of the operator. I'm not going to go into details here, but yes, we do talk about distributed databases with uh, very fast technologies, which are designed in-house by STG Interactive to allow the registrations of millions, of uh, hundreds of millions of Frogan addresses, and even more. OK, your slides are back up. Great. So that's what we were talking about. Moving to the second thing that we wanted to talk about, how, how is STG Interactive going to do to allow billions of web surfers to access those databases? Well, 
it needs working with the global internet players. At the moment, we are working with level three communications and we have a representative of this company who is going to speak just after me. Yes, Mr. Breton, he is going to be with us in a minute. So that's for the network part. Now for the server part, you can imagine that resolving tens of millions of requests per second requires servers that are going to be adapted to the need. So these are servers that were designed in-house by us in Paris at SDG Interactive. Okay, Matthew, can you tell us more? What kind of infrastructure are you talking about? What kind of equipment? What kind of machine do we need to use? I'll give you the example of one of our servers because it's the it's deployment phase one. So at the moment we have five servers, one in Europe, four in the US, two on the East Coast, two on the West Coast. So at the moment, STG has five servers, one in Europe, two in on the East Coast and two on the West Coast in the US. Yeah, absolutely. So let me take the example of one of our servers on the East Coast, which is that of New York. So you can see USA, New York, L3A, meaning that it's in one of the level three data centers in the New York area, FNS01, to say that it's in the first bay that we have in, the, in these uh, data centers, server 01, saying it's the first server in the first bay, and then 01 to say that it's the first in the 10 fibers connected to this server at the moment. We just have one. Okay, you are saying first, first, first. So it's a first rollout phase. So one server in five data centers in the US and in Europe and one connection in each of these servers. So far, that's it. Okay, so we're talking about servers, but maybe some of you are not familiar with uh, such uh, pieces of equipment. So can you just, you know, tell us about the capabilities of such systems? Yeah, it's not very difficult. I'll just share with you some data and compare that to what you're used to. Là, effectivement, la première donnée va pas trop vous parler. So yes, the first data is not going to be very meaningful to standard people. These are two you type of servers. That's a height in a bay. Olivier Breton, Olivier Breton will explain more about that later. So this is a server that has six core multi-thread processors, so we have 24 uh, cores, so in a standard computer, good quality one, we'll have, you'd have single pro processors, four cores, multi-threads, so eight software threads, we have 24, so that's three times more. Then, in terms of RAM, so that the server can work in good conditions, we have 32 gigs in RAM. Une machine grand public, on est entre quatre. Your computer has between four and eight gigs. If it's a good quality computer, then what makes this server quite specific is what we actually put in it. So we have a flash card. It's a Fusion IO flash card, 50 megs. So whatever the number of Frogan's addresses which are going to be registered and whatever the filling rate, we have the same read and write throughput 
So even if it was full, this would be totally transparent for, for, for the end user. Then, as I said, we have just one fiber at the moment, one fiber per server, but we anticipated and will be able to have up to 10 fibers per server. The cards, I mean, everything's ready. All it takes is connecting them. And as can be expected for this kind of server, this is a Linux server, 10K. So we can process a very large number of simultaneous requests. Very large. Can you demonstrate it? Because so far all I understood is that it's a very big computer that goes very fast. So I think the best thing would be to test your performance. So once again, over to you and please explain what this is about. Okay, just need a couple seconds here. We just had a few technical glitches, but that's standard practice. Not a problem. Take your time. In the meantime, uh, with Matthew, we are going to try and simulate. Um, we're going to pretend that on one of the FNS servers, um, let's take the, uh, the New York example, we're going to send uh, a very high number of simultaneous queries. And we are going to find out how many the server can handle per second. Okay. We call this an injection. We're going to start with a low number of uh, requests or queries, and then we're gradually going to increase the load. And uh, at the same time, we can see how many can be processed by one of the FNS servers in its initial configuration described by Matthew, by Matthew earlier. So one server, one data center with one fiber. Est-ce que euh, est-ce que vous me donnez un peu de visibilité? Très bien. We're almost ready. Alors je vous remercie de patienter. So let's wait just a few more seconds. Um, Mais comme vous le voyez, on utilise aussi beaucoup de matériel aujourd'hui. Uh, As you can see, all this is live. We're using, you know, some of the uh, some hardware that we had to bring. Where we need to disconnect computers, reconnect computers. That's why all this is taking a little bit of time. Um, and that's why we've had a very short break also, so thank you for your patience. And in the meantime, it looks like we're ready. Um, it is working. Very good. So, right now, the, the server is uh, idle and um, it is... I'm going to ask my colleague to proceed with the first injection. Um, so I'm connected from, from here with the New York server. Is this live? Oh yes, absolutely. They were connected live uh, using um, inter internet. Yeah, right, that's why it took a bit of time to connect. But uh, what you're seeing here is live. Are we using the Wi-Fi that people are using in the room? No, we're not. No, uh, bon. Forcément, on a on établi des des connexions sécurisées. We have, of course, um, a protected uh, connection, and we decided to Mathieu, not peut... use Wi-Fi. Matthew, I think we can start the injection. Alors, il y a, a quelqu'un d'autre qui s'appelle Matthew. Hein, C'est pas euh, <laughs> il, il s'est pas demandé à lui-même. So that would be another Matthew. Voilà. Okay, here we go. So. We've just started the injection. So these are other servers that we own that are performing this injection through internet. It's not the server that is self-injecting or auto-injecting. We are doing this uh, from other servers. So right now we're injecting from one server, 30 seconds. We have a fairly stable number of uh, queries about uh, 15,500 or 600 per second. 
Euh, bah, je me risquerai pas à faire le calcul sur okay. sur une heure ou même sur une journée. So for an hour or a day, I don't know. That's that's a lot. It is. It is a lot. So Matthew has just started another injection server. So as you can see, the number is now sharply increasing. Voilà, c'est en train de se stabiliser. Ah. And uh, the number is now stable. We are now just over one minute into the process. Uh, 35,000 queries per minute. Sorry, per second. Ce dont sont capables à l'heure actuelle. This is what our servers can handle with uh, uh, one fiber. So one server, we have five. Okay, 35,000 per second. So I just did the math. That's three billion queries a day, roughly. That's a lot, right? That's a lot. Donc voilà, potentiellement, sur la, la phase 1 du déploiement, on est déjà sur... So, potentially in phase 1 of the deployment, uh, we have this, which is fairly robust as we... Just, uh, we just said absolutely, and that's exactly what we wanted. And this is only uh, the first phase of the deployment. Five servers, one fiber each. Okay, of course, we're not going to leave it there. Right, because this looks like a, a lot. But uh, eventually, if we're talking about billions of connections, three billion connections, that's a lot uh, for a single day. Um, but um, it, could, it could be a, a lot more. So uh, we're looking at potentially incre uh, increasing this, absolutely. And then you have the architecture which is ready to uh, deal with uh, much bigger loads. Absolutely. If we could come back to uh, the earlier slide. Matthew, I think you can interrupt uh, the injection. I think this was uh, this was a, a a great illustration of uh, of the system. Thank you. Bon, alors on retient que donc. Okay, so once once again, with the current uh, system, we're talking about three billion queries per day. That's about 30,000 per second, and again, phase one of the deployment. Three billion. Even verysign.com would be very happy about that. And I'm not even sure their infrastructure would actually manage it, uh, manage that many requests. Okay, can we get the slides, please? Merci. Okay, here we are. So, once again, there are three important things that we need to we need to keep in mind. Some 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 things are uh, faster than others to implement. First of all, the number of fibers per server, as I said, right now our servers are uh, can accommodate up to ten fibers, but they only have one. So very quickly we could get additional uh, connectivity by adding fiber to the servers. So that's one thing. Then we could add servers in the data centers. We have bays that have been booked and therefore it would be very easy um, uh, to send additional servers as a backup. Last but not least, we could also add data centers. As I said, we have two west coast, two on the east coast, um, but um, in the future um, we are looking at having uh, additional presence around the world, Latin America, Asia, for example. 
Eh bien, écoute, on va illustrer ça. OK. Well, very good. Let's illustrate this uh, im immediately, as we said at the beginning of the presentation. To do this, we need robust servers designed um, uh, and configured with you by STG Interactive, and these servers have to be shipped, they have to be installed in data centers, and then they have to be connected to the web, to the web with uh, optic fiber. So, Matthew, stay with us, stay in the, in the area. To talk about level three with STG Interactive, I would like to uh, ask Mr. Olivier Breton to join me on stage.